Borders are a great option for finishing a quilt. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some of your options that you have with a border and show you how to add a basic border onto your quilt top. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. Now, when I make quilts, I make a lot of quilts that don't have any borders on them at all. Like this red scrappy log cabin sampler, no border. And some of the quilts I make actually have fake borders. Like this no flies in my garden quilt, it looks like it has a border, but it doesn't. Also, in my film the blanks table runner and placemats, they look like they have borders, but they don't have borders. That's a trick that I really like to use. But sometimes a border can really finish off a quilt. If you get a quilt pattern, it might have instructions for a pieced border, like on this dreams come true quilt. But if you're making your own quilt, you don't need a pattern to put a basic border onto a quilt top. I'm gonna to show you today how you can easily do that. If you wanna add multiple borders to your quilt, like in this red and white nine patch sampler quilt, it's gonna be the same technique. You just do one border at a time, adding as many borders as you want. So when you're making decisions about the borders for your quilt, the first thing to think about is what fabric you're gonna use for the borders. Often, if your quilt has sashing, the same fabric is used for the border, but that's totally optional. So you can check out this video I have about auditioning fabrics for sashing, and you can use that same trick for auditioning fabrics for borders. Another nice thing is to have a narrow border that matches the sashing, and then a wider border in a different contrasting fabric. So take a look at quilts that you see online or at your guild or at a quilt show, and then get ideas for what you like, and then you can duplicate that in your quilt project. Once you've chosen your fabric, then the other thing you need to consider is how wide you want your borders. And there's no exact rule for this. A general guide, if you have a basic traditional quilt with blocks and sashing, is that your border would be larger than your sashing and smaller than your blocks, but that is not a rule that you need to feel to follow if you're looking for something different. Also, your borders don't have to be the same size at the top and bottom and at the sides of your quilt. So if you wanna make your quilt to fit something specifically, like a specific bed size, then you can feel free to make it wider or longer. Sometimes if you want a quilt on a bed and you want it to hang down the sides, you can just make the borders on the sides of the quilt wider. So once you've determined that, then we're gonna cut the fabric. So we're gonna do the border on the sides of the quilt first. This is a traditional way. It's not a law set in stone that you must follow, but this is what's commonly done. And so on this sample, I'm gonna put a four inch border all the way around the quilt. So I'm gonna have four inch pieces. And to figure out how long my pieces are gonna be, I'm gonna lay out my quilt top somewhere flat. And so this might need to be the floor if you don't have a table that is large enough. And then once it's laid out, I'm gonna take this kind of a measuring tape and I'm gonna measure how long it actually is. And I'm gonna get that number and I'm gonna measure it in more than one place. Because sometimes when we have a quilt top, it doesn't work out exactly as it's supposed to in the pattern. So we wanna deal with the size that we have, not the size that we wish we had. And once we've measured in three places, if it's a very large quilt, you might wanna do four or five. I'm gonna take those numbers and then take the average of those numbers. So add them together and then divide by the number of numbers that you added. And then that is gonna be how long we want our border pieces to be. So what we don't want to do is just take a long piece, 
sew it onto the side and then trim it off. Uh, that will look okay when we're doing it, but sometimes that can lead to stretching and buckling in our quilt top and we'll end up with the top that's not as square as it can be and that will make difficulties in the quilting. Um, so if we're gonna try and keep it as square and aligned as possible, this is how we do that. We're gonna take our strip of border fabric that we've cut and we're gonna cut that exactly to the size that we've measured that we're gonna need. Now, if you have a large quilt top, you might need to join more than one piece. So in this case, you would just join two strips with a straight seam and then cut your piece. If you have a long piece to cut and a small cutting mat, you can check this video that I have for a tip for how to cut a long piece with a short mat. So when we get our two side pieces cut to size, then we're gonna be ready to join them. Now I have my side border pieces cut. We're gonna pin these in a couple of reference points just to keep them all aligned. So to find these points, I'm gonna take my border piece, fold it in half, and then finger press right on the crease, and then fold that in half again, and finger press. So now I have the quarters marked on this piece. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the quilt top. And then now we're going to pin these together and we have our reference points. So we have our end points and then we have our quarter points where we have our two creases that we've made and we know that those are going to align. So we're gonna put pins in these spots. Once it's pinned, then we'll take it to the sewing machine and stitch this with a quarter inch seam. Now the side borders have been added onto the quilt top, so we're gonna do the same process for adding on the top and bottom borders. So we'll begin by measuring in a few different places and then averaging those numbers so that we know how long to cut our pieces. Then we're gonna mark reference points, pin them on, and then stitch with the quarter inch seam allowance. So that's all there is for adding a border. If you wanna add multiple borders, you can just repeat those steps over again. Measure, cut, pin, stitch, and press. For more quilting tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to check out EBITDA Studio. Thank you.